Okay, good morning for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Pilar. Um, and thank you to the other speakers who have been, I think, um, quite supportive of what we put on the table. There's a long way to go uh, in terms of the implementation of the strategic dimensions of the communication we've, we've laid out. And it was the result of a substantial effort to consult with all the stakeholders. So the sense that we've got some of the messages right, I think, is, is quite comforting um, because we have been listening. Um, I think I want to say a couple of words about why we think this is important and uh, why cloud is important. One is uh, around the cost reduction issue, and particularly when we look at the cloud partnership, which is largely orientated towards public sector take-up, we know we face very, very significant costs in our IT resourcing, and uh, cloud can help us reduce those costs in principle. But the economic equation, so that the deal you're making is different than it was in the past. So whereas in the past it may have been capital expenditure, now it tends to be operational expenditure, the budgets are different, the way that you do the calculations are different. And this is this requires quite a change. It's a sea change in the way in which we do IT resourcing and that kind of public expenditure. And therefore, risk assessment in respect of it, um, how should I spend my money, and even just budget planning is totally different. Um, but cost reduction is certainly an aim, and you see in, in the communication we say that, well, if we look at the infrastructures, we maybe have got 10 or 20 percent utilisation of the data centres we've got today, and clearly we, in, in terms of static efficiency, we can increase, if we can increase the utilisation rates, then we have a big gain to be made. But I actually don't think that's where the body is buried. That's not where the issue is. The issue is actually a transformative effect of cloud. And, and here I'd like to sort of make a reference to something which we call the API economy, you know, uh, application program the interface economy. So the way we are doing business in the future is going to be different from the way we're doing business now. And the cloud is part of that shift. It provides an opportunity for, if you like, the industrialization of the way in which we get IT resources. This is a, a sea change in the way in which we are going to uh, procure, whether we're public or private, small firm, big firm, or even uh, private individuals, we're going to procure our IT services. And what cloud offers us the opportunity to do is to, is, is to have an industrialization of this. So um, uh, talking to a, a, a European CIO, public sector CIO recently, uh, indicated that about 1% of GDP is spent on IT uh, resourcing, purchasing, um, uh, at today, and, that, and they, this person was saying, well, I think if I can get very, very smart, very, very agile services, I can actually reduce that, my IT spend in my, by my government, by as much as 90%. Whether I believe that or not, I don't know, but it's a very, very big change that we could achieve. But I mean, that's not coming from infrastructure utilization, that's coming from standardization. It means applications and services which are using economies of scale and scope and which are available in a very in a reusable format so that we can increase the performance of the services and we don't have to have the thing rebuilt every time for every different minor change of application or every different procuring authority and so on. This is a transformation in the way in which we will do business in the future. And it has some big challenges, I think, for the tech sector because it will actually probably um, make some more difficulty of, of, of extracting value out of the proposition. It's about moving from hand-building carriages to mass production of cars. That's the kind of transition we're talking about. The economies here are, are massive. Now, that's why we've put the actions on the table that we have. The standardization issue is fundamental, uh, and mapping out what are the standards in this space is fundamental to actually achieving that industrialization of IT provisioning. Um, contracts is, is an essential part of determining what you want to do or what you're expecting from your cloud provider. And the service level agreements, as Freddie was just describing, I think, in graphic detail, the service level agreements are often extremely difficult to negotiate contracts and the service level agreements that would go with them. Now, in reality, if you want the elasticity of cloud, so you can scale up resources and scale down, and introduce new, new uh, functionalities and so on and so forth, uh, you have this kind of six-month process to agree a contract, 
then it's going to be very difficult to have that kind of flexibility. So we have to, have, we have to migrate to a new way of doing this kind of business, which is lighter, which is more modular, which is more structured, which is more secure and, and predictable. And that's why the, the contracts in the corporate area are going to be very important. But we also have to provide long-term confidence in the system for consumers and for small firms who are in the position to have six months of negotiation around an SLA or around a contract. So that means about transparency about what is the <coughs> service offer that they are getting. And this is not to say, okay, we will, uh, the European Commission, determine what should be in cloud contracts. That's not our role. What our role is to try to bring together the two sides and to allow them to understand in greater transparency in a more structured way uh, what actually the, the risks, the, the balance of risks are on both sides. So the European Cloud Partnership, to come to the theme that's, that's been put, put on me for today, is actually building on these two other layers of standardization and contract terms. These are, these are kind of fundamentals. Because what it's about is it's about um, getting the public sector into a position where it feels confident to move more of its activity into the cloud because it can reduce costs, but also because it can increase productivity and performance. But we're not going to do that unless we have very clear deals between the suppliers and the uh, uh, procurers. Um, we have two levels. One level is a strategic level advising nearly Cruz about you know, what are the priorities for cloud. And we hope in this area, uh, we had the first meeting of the steering board uh, about a week ago, and we hope in this area to identify some concrete areas where these particular senior individuals will mobilize change. So they will start to push forward collectively some actions areas where they think they can start to get concrete examples going on. The second area is, is about building user requirements commonly across the European Union. And here the point is that uh, we need to have learned by practicing, by working together to define collectively what we need from cloud services. So this rebalances the equation and increases the transparency about what we are asking for when we are public authorities trying to get cloud services. Um, this is based, it will be based on our current call from the framework program where we've put a small pot of money, 10 million aside for different public authorities to come together and start working on this collectively. And we think that process will also help them to learn one from another and to share results because this is also part of the story. So EuroCIO has its, its, its networks to do that at corporate level. We want to do this also amongst the public procurers. Let me just say uh, one final thing. Um, the issue of the legal frameworks, and uh, as Bilal says, we're not here to discuss the data protection and so on and so forth, but we think that, that it's very, very much the case that cloud raises the stakes in respect of the digital single market agendas that we have already put on the table, the digital agenda. So the fact that we need a harmonised basis for data protection in Europe is fundamental. So the proposal of the Commission here is very, very important. We need to lower the uncertainties that cloud providers have and cloud users have in respect of moving into the cloud and to raise the possibilities of economies of scale across the European space. So the data protection example is a very good one. And we have some actions in the cloud communication which is already moving this forward on the basis of the current acquis. The issue around, for instance, digital content and whether or not private copy levies, and this is a favourite of John's, uh, will be applied to different kinds of cloud services. We need clarity about, you know, what's the game? What, what's, what's the set of rules? Uh, we need to have European ID systems which are really working so that we can have uh, single sign-on in complex, multi-vendor, uh, multi-agency sites, uh, and so on. So we need a lot of those things we've already put on the table. Um, and so progress on that starts to become really important because without these things, Europe will be at an enormous competitive disadvantage, both as a user of the benefits of cloud, but also as uh, where 60 to 80 percent of the value added will be for industry, where we will be providers of services on a European and global level. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ken.